As we begin chapter three, we want to really focus on how to identify different classes of molecules that you'd find in living organisms. And so we have a whole group of those that we're gonna be identifying, but the most important thing that we have to know to do that is our functional groups. So those were at the end of the last chapter. And if we review the um, ones that we're gonna see most frequently right now, the first one is the hydroxyl group. And the hydroxyl group is known by an OH. So anytime we see that combination, that's the hydroxyl. Properties of the hydroxyl is really that this part is expanded. It's an oxygen that has what would be a polar covalent bond to a hydrogen. And if that's a polar covalent bond, this oxygen's always gonna be a little negative. This hydrogen's always gonna be a little bit positive because that is a polar covalent bond. The next functional group is going to be the carbonyl. And the carbonyl group is going to be like this, okay? That would also be a polar covalent bond because the oxygen is very strong and the carbon is very weak. The carboxyl is going to be like this. So the carboxyl is kind of a combination between the hydroxyl and the carbonyl. This we want to think of as being our acidic or one of our acidic functional groups. It's something that you're going to frequently see in an acid. And another way that this is written, if we kind of condense it down, is you might see it written like this. Okay, COOH, same difference there. It's also the carboxyl group. And then one last one that I want to point out right now is the amino functional group. And the amino functional group is an NH2. That can also be written like this, where we see it actually expanded. Those are going to be polar covalent bonds as well. And so we would find that the nitrogen is going to be a little negative, the hydrogens are going to be a little bit positive, and this one is basic. So since this is a basic functional group, it will um, give base properties, base-like properties, to different molecules that it's found in. So make sure that you know these functional groups, that you memorize them. If you need to make flashcards for them, that would be helpful because if you know these and know what they look like, that's going to help you a lot as you go through and learn the molecules in this coming chapter.